How are y'all doing? I thought I'd make a garden video today to kind of show you around the garden. Uh, put a couple of videos online uh, showing how I planted some, some black eyed peas and some purple old peas, but I thought today I'd just kind of show everybody around and uh, kind of see what we've been doing. Uh, I'll, I'm going to show you some successes and, and some failures. You know, we've got some, some things that did good, some things that did bad, but uh, overall we're really pleased this year. We're learning a lot. Uh, we started out gardening here in, in, on this lot 15 years ago. We had a little old garden right here with this greenhouse sets that was four foot by eight foot cross tie. And we started gardening there and it's, it's, it's grown into what you see today. And uh, we recently, back in January, bought the property next door to us. We uh, are in the process of tearing the house down and remodeling the shop over there and, and remodeling our, our little woodshed here into a barn to store some stuff in. And uh, I'm really working on improving the soil over there. So uh, thought I'd invite you along and, and really appreciate it if y'all would watch. And uh, give me feedback. I, I, I really like to have feedback and, uh, and, and, and learn as I go. Hope you enjoy. There in the very back of this row, I've got some sunflowers. And uh, I've measured that tallest one kind of there in the back at uh, well over eight feet. Uh, we really just kind of growing those to uh, feed the birds and, and just to kind of let the, see, the girls see kind of how a sunflower grows. And here in the front, I've got a block of some uh, uh, Stoll's Evergreen uh, sweet corn. Uh, it's coming on pretty good. Uh, stocks have really, really grown up pretty good, uh, even with our lack of rain. Here on this row, I've got some uh, cotton. We uh, planted this really more than anything just to kind of show our kids kind of where our uh, clothes came from and, and how, how cotton actually grows. Uh, I'm not real sure that uh, Gina is going to be getting in there and uh, making any clothes out of this, but uh, it'd be kind of cool anyways. Over here next to it, I've got some uh, cantaloupe uh, planted kind of amongst that. You can kind of see up the row there that uh, there's some more cantaloupe growing there as well. Right here, I've got uh, several okra plants. Uh, it's about a 10 foot row of okra. Uh, I've already harvested quite a bit of okra off of it, uh, but as I understand, uh, if it does like it has in the past for us, these things will be six feet tall by the end of the summer and uh, really coming on strong. Right here behind the uh, okra is a, is a short row of dill. Uh, we're hoping to uh, make some pickles with that. And the cucumbers that are right over here behind the, the corn there's a trellis there and they're really starting to take off and climb that trellis and uh, we have uh, harvested some of uh, cucumbers off of that as well here's my uh, pepper bed uh, I've got quite a few peppers here I've got a uh, bell pepper poblano pepper pimento pepper and uh, jalapeno pepper uh, we've already harvested some, some jalapenos the uh, bell peppers have just now started to kind of bloom and set some fruit and uh, looking forward to uh, some stuffed bell peppers pretty soon. I've been craving those, but with bell peppers as high as they are in the supermarket, it's just unheard of to stuff a pan of peppers. Here's a volunteer tomato that came up in my bell pepper row. Uh, I hate to kill a tomato plant, I just left it there. Uh, not sure what it's going to be or if it's even going to produce fruit, but there is some tomatoes on there. So uh, I don't think it's going to hurt anything there. This row I've got a uh, row of black eyed peas. I uh, wasn't really intentionally going to plant these here, but uh, we uh, planted our tomatoes and thought we were going to get four rows and we only actually got three. So I just kind of threw these seeds down and uh, it was uh, early, early April when I did this. and. Uh, Boy, they're really coming on strong. I really thought the weather might have been too cool for, for them, but uh, gosh, they're doing pretty good. Uh, over here to the right, I've got tomatoes. I've got three rows. I've spaced them uh, 
pretty close to two feet apart. Some of them are just a little bit closer, but most of them are two feet apart on three foot rows. Uh, we're using kind of a modified Florida weave system on our tomatoes. Uh, every, every time the tomatoes get up about a foot above that rope, I will, uh, or twine actually, it's not rope, but uh, I will uh, take and, and tie some more sisal twine and uh, kind of weave it in and out of the tomato plants from one side to the other and kind of holds them in there and uh, keeps them from falling over. It's the first time I've ever done it. We'll see how it works out. Uh, it's gotten really hot here. We've had some days in the hundreds and uh, it seems like some of the blooms are not setting any fruit. Uh, but you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's quite a few tomatoes on there. Uh, but what I've done is, uh, it's all experimental, but I've, I've kind of put some shade cloth on top just to kind of see if, uh, if that would help the blooms at all. Just not sure. Uh, we'll see how it works out. I've gotten some feedback on, uh, the Bayou Gardener forum and, uh, it's kind of mixing, you know, 50, 50 down the, down the middle, whether or not that actually works or not. Uh, I guess we'll be the guinea pig and see if it does. Next to my tomatoes, I've got sweet corn. I haven't really been uh, very excited about this corn. It, uh, it came on strong, grew real fast, but it seems like once it started to tassel out and, and put silks on and all, it just uh, hasn't gotten very big and the corn on it's really small. Uh, we did harvest some corn this morning off of it and uh, it was good. I mean, we, we blanched it in some water and froze it, but the ears are just really small and I'm just not real, uh, real uh, positive about this, but uh, we'll try again next time and, and see how we do. I don't know if it was a variety maybe in my climate or, or what it was. We just didn't do very good with this, but uh, we'll try again. These are the black eyed peas that I planted back on May the 29th. Uh, they came up in about four days. I guess the, the hot weather really gets them germinating strong and uh, they're doing really good. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this double row method works for me. I've, I've prepared the soil, fertilized it, and uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, and here in the end, I've got uh, four rows of purple hole peas we planted back on June the 1st. Uh, I don't know if y'all watched the other video I made of planting the purple hole peas, but these were actually the, the peas that I planted. And uh, of course, today's June the 9th, so I mean, this is this is nine days later and they're up, they're up pretty tall and uh, really looking forward to see uh, how these do for us. It was the first time we've ever planted purple hole peas and uh, we're kind of excited. This is the, uh, squash row. Uh, I've got yellow squash here in the front and towards the back. Those The bigger squash back in the back, that's actually zucchini. And I don't know what we're going to do with all the zucchinis we've gotten so far, but uh, we've made a lot of bread, put a lot in the freezer, and uh, we're looking at some other recipes to see what all we can do to preserve this best we can. And and I, I recently have added a soaker hose to this row to really try to keep this watered. Uh, this this hot weather's really gotten to us this year. Here at the back of my garden, I've got some pole beans. Uh, we planted uh, it's about eight foot, eight to ten foot here. We've kind of made this trellis that uh, that they can grow kind of up over. And as you can see in the picture, I hope you can see that there's uh, quite a few beans on it. We've already picked uh, a little bit of a harvest off here and had some for supper the other night. And and I've read uh, where you can get quite a few off these pole beans and they pretty much produce most of the year. So we're kind of excited to see how these do. Along the back fence here I've got uh, some blackberry raspberry bushes. There's a couple of raspberries, a couple of blackberries and uh, they're doing pretty good. This is their first year. Some are doing better than others. The main thing we're having to try to really do is keep them watered. They really uh, really dry out pretty quick in this heat. Here I've got a dewberry bush. Uh, it's kind of like a, a raspberry or a blackberry and uh, from what I understand they really grow wild 
here along the railroad tracks in Texas and uh, in Oklahoma. And uh, we found this thing in a nursery and snatched it up and planted it and it has done the best by far out of all the berry bushes we planted this year. Here out in front of my, my garden I have a, a house that we actually purchased this property next door to our place uh, first of the year and, and I'm in the process right now of tearing this house down and plan on eventually where that house sets having some more garden space. Uh, as you can kind of see out there in, behind the house there we planted some peach trees. I've got uh, four peach trees there and uh, really looking forward to have that space where that house is. Out in front of our greenhouse fence here we've got a uh, quite a few wildflowers planted. We planted these back in August of last year and, and they've really done good. And actually there looks like there's some ryegrass that's mixed in as well. We uh, overseeded the whole garden with ryegrass last year and let it grow and, and tilled it in as a cover crop this February. But uh, it, it ain't hurting nothing. My wife's actually clipped some of that and put it in some of her flower arrangements.